Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is your host, That Creepy Reading, presenting another story for the month of October. This story is called The Perfect Child, and we see how a nurse is driven to insanity when she perceives the, what's presumably the perfect infant for a young one to see. What will happen? What will be entailed in this 18 plus gruesome tale according to the wiki? Only time will tell, so please sit back, relax, turn the lights off, and let's begin. He was the sweetest child in the world. There was no doubt about it. The moment he was born, people gathered around his nursery, pointing at his sleeping form and crooning. What glorious hair, what beautiful lips, oh, what adorable chubby cheeks. Fathers ignored their own newborn children in the favor of this tiny, perfect baby. Mothers toddled to the grass, pressed their faces against it, crying about their poor fortune. How much better their life would be if this seemingly perfect infant was their child. The nurse that delivered him was amazed when she first held him in her arms. His skin was creamy and white, not that molted pink every other baby sported. At first, she thought that he was simply dead. His eyes were shut and his dark brown curls matted against his skull. As soon as she held him, however, she knew that he was just fine. He opened his eyes and looked at her with all the intelligence of an adult breathing calmly and wrapping his tiny infant fingers around a loose strand of her blonde hair. He never once cried, and sadly this caused her mother to worry from her bed, sitting up and crying out to nurse, which was so lovingly cradling her child. Hey baby, my baby, what's wrong with him? Her voice was weak, and her eyes fluttered as she exhaustively fumbled about the bed sheets that she was straddled in. The nurse glared over this perfect infant's head, and snapped at the woman. There was nothing wrong with this child, and there never will be. Reluctantly, the nurse snipped at the child's umbilical cord and set him gently in the nursery, kissing his head and promising that she would be back for him. Late that night, the nurse quietly tiptoed back into the mother's room with a hospital-issued pillow clutched calmly in her hands. She smothered the mother silently and cleanly. No one was the wiser. The child would be hers no matter what she had to do for it. She would kill thousands of women to get her hands on that lovely little boy. Swiftly, she crept back into the nursery, bending over the tiny crib and holding her angel. Crooning, she told the baby stories of how she would love him and how he would grow up and how well he'd be taken care of of, and how well he would be better off. The nurse didn't even hear the man sliding into the nursery behind her. Scalpel held firmly in his left hand. She didn't even feel the cold steel delicately around her slender throat. Nor did she feel the two sides of her skin part so cleanly when gently coaxed by the clean blade. Nor did she feel the slick gush of blood out of her throat as she happily died. Her fingertips gently caressing the perfect child's gorgeous beautiful face. Even in the last thrones of death. The man who had so proficiently murdered the nurse stepped over her dying body. A look of absolute adoration plastered his face, and without a word, he picked up the child into his arms and stole it out of the hospital. Behind him, every nurse and doctor in the maternity ward went nearly insane looking at him. It was a serene summer night outside, warm enough for the man to carry his child back to his apartment leaving his car and very pregnant wife back at the hospital, in which he had so deftly escaped from. When he was back at his apartment, he did not sleep. Instead, he sat the tiny, beautiful baby boy on his bed and watched him. 
For 14 days he would watch this beautiful child, only moving to feed it and bathe it and give it all the care it needed. And more. The baby was the center of his universe, and soon the wife came home and... With a mouthful of angry words to toss at her neglectful husband, and a tiny baby of her own to take care of. She would say things like, You left me alone at this hospital to have this baby all on my own? Not even a word from you! I thought you were dead, Adam! She would then throw her purse furiously at her husband, who had not even yet to glance over her shoulder to look at her. The baby in the stroller she had been so lovingly attentive to before opening the door was left back at the entrance, alone at the apartment. The child inside it was awoken by its mother's piercing shrieks, and when the mother went to go kick this man that she suddenly, desperately, violently despised, she laid her eyes on the most perfect child she had ever seen. It was tiny. It was a glowing white child with huge black eyes and the most flawless dark curls on the face of this earth, and without hesitation she leaped towards her weak and starved husband and choked the last bits of life out of him. Desperate to lay her lips against this child, watching his face turn increasingly blue and frantic the tighter she pulled her long fingers around her neck. Moments later she was on the bed wrapped tightly around his darling baby as she should be without harming it. She drank from its warmth, ignoring her increasingly distressed cries of her own baby. Soon, irritated beyond belief by her own incredibly flawed infant child and its cries for her attention and affection, she took her aggressions out on it, leaping on the baby as quickly as she could, not wanting to be a, away from the vision of this beauty serenely on her bed for too long. She picked up her child with one hand and slammed it fiercely against the wall of the apartment until its head was nothing more than a mash of blood and bone and brain bubbling out of her dirtying hands. The police came knocking on the apartment door not too much later. Terrified by the vicious noises from the apartment beside them, the family next door had called 911 reporting domestic abuse. <laughs> Clearly a understatement. Cautiously, hands on the guns that rested at their hips, the two police officers entered the apartment. Upon entering, their noses were assaulted by several awful smells. Rot, death, and the smell of someone who had been sitting in their own filth for nearly two weeks wafted through the air. It didn't take long for the officers to see the destruction that occurred in this loving home. The gaunt dead husband dragged half-heartedly into the hallway, his hair matted with blood. The younger officer swayed at his feet, threatening to faint. Listen, uh, Frank, sir, I have a pregnant wife at home. I, I, I can't do this. I, I can't get killed in here. His plea was quiet and disappointed, but the elder officer simply waved the man forward. They could hear the cooing in the bedroom down the hall and stepping over the dead man that lay at the entrance the elder officer slowly made his way down the hallway and into the darkened room with the open door upon entering and lighting the actual light the elder officer bent down and vomited at the scene that met his eyes which was even too much for anyone experiences him to handle the blood was smeared all over the wall where there was a dead baby. Lying there on the floor, its face was a smashed mess. But not only that, it had been mercilessly beaten. Even its body looked like a gelatinous mess of broken bones and white skin and baby parts. On the bed was a chubby woman, obviously the woman who had born and murdered her own child. Cradled in her arms, pressed firmly against her swollen breast, was a naked, rotten baby. Its skin blue and its mouth puffed up with death. She was whispering to it so sweetly. The most 
intent look on her face. The younger officer, however, was calm. It was clear what he must do. The woman had held an angel, and he wanted it. Such a perfect child had never existed. The decision was easy to make. Pulling out his gun, she shot the woman once in the head. The lighting and the explosion of the gorgeous crimson that fanned out behind her. The younger man's companion turned and looked at the confusion on his face, and immediately he was met with two bullets in the left eye and right eye. Smiling, the younger man watched his friend slide back against the already bloodied wall behind him. This baby would be his, and no one is taking it from me now. It's all mine. <laughs> it's mine. And that was the perfect child. There is nothing wrong with the story. It's gruesome, it's sweet, to the point, a little short, but definitely gets and conveys the feeling of dread and the satanic baby that seems to just allure everyone's attention. Now, I can honestly say that I've read better, but the story. As for a gruesome, chilling one, I can honestly say without a heart is a 10 out of 10. Stay tuned for the next episode of TCR Reads, or whatever the hell you want to call it. Just sit back and relax and remember, <laughs> it's just fiction. <laughs>